Welcome back familiar to Northside LDN and today we have Arsenal Football Club on social saying oh a Champions League journey to be proud of getting kicked out and uh, yeah we're going to get straight into it apparently we should be happy because it took Man City seven years to win the Champions League Funny. That's a funny one. That's a funny one. We're going to get straight into it. We're going to get straight into it. Let's go. Munich 1, Arsenal 0. 1, missing a Maverick. 1 0 down with a tie on the line. Only mustering a single shot in the second half. Hopelessly passing about like robots. Tonight showed that Arsenal missed a game breaker. A moment provider that when the tactics aren't working, can go and make something out of nothing. 2. The Martinelli Dilemma. A fan's favourite here maybe because his work rate is fantastic. But right now he's looking limited out wide. Not as much of a natural winger like a Leroy Sané. I wonder if it's time for Arteta to move him centrally. Three, sack is... Really? Every single game you feel that puta, man, looking at the, flipping the North London Jay Sean, you're always talking about five things that we've learned from Arsenal. Why are you even putting on that voice? That's not even your natural voice. You ain't, you ain't sounding sexy, bro. You're talking to men. Be careful. I don't know which way you swing, but you're sounding bare fruity. Let me tell you this, yeah? You feel that puta, you absolute clown. Every single game, you say five things we learned about Arsenal, so you didn't know. That we needed, we needed a better squad and we needed a better team. You didn't know that Martinelli can only run in a straight line. You didn't know about that. After all them videos, after every game, you're telling me now that you didn't know that. This guy's a clown, bro. This guy's an absolute clown. Yeah? Now we want to talk about Saka's pressure. Let's keep going. Pressure. Someone that your boys openly called world class tonight was not good enough. Zero shots and zero key passes for the first time since 2021. He may now be getting scrutinised, but when you're at the highest level, you best get used to it. Four, Arsenal's real prime. Okay. So, Staffy, it's not negative to be saying that we need another right winger, bro. It's not negative anymore. Now it's Honestly. okay. <laughs> now say, it's bro, all right. You know, you know, it's... Um, the issue is, bro, people like us like to call shots early because we could see it and we don't drink the Kool-Aid. But later on, when it's obvious to everyone, they're like, yeah, 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 we need this, we need that. And I just look at it and I'm like, well, it's 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 too late, isn't it? Like the, the the train has already passed. You know, you you missed the train. You know, you can't be saying stuff that I was saying before, and now you're saying, yeah, yeah you were right. Because actually, they they never say you were right. They just like slide, like they, they slide in and they low key start start saying the same thing without acknowledging. You know what? I was wrong at first. You know, I was just trying to do this whole thing just to look like the 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 super fan out there. You know, but the people that are toxic and negative. No, they weren't toxic and negative after all. They were just realists. And they saw this happening before it happened because they're maybe just intelligent enough and they're not reactionary, you know? But it's always it's always nice to, to just later on admit you were wrong when it's evidential, when everyone could see it. Whenever you could see it, yeah, let's just say it. But when you're in the minority and you're on that hill on your own, it's never, it's never fashionable, bro. It's never fashionable. Them ones, bro. You know what I mean? Vindication. Vindication, bro. Priority. While signing a striker feels obvious, watching that Kimmich performance today, pass by pass unraveling our team, that's a profile that Arsenal need just as desperately. Five, a necessary lesson. In Arsenal's first Champions League campaign in six years, exiting at the quarterfinals feels disappointing. Bayern may have been good, but with no Coleman, Gnabry and Davies, the tie was there for Arsenal to take. We had to be braver. We had to show more urgency. The Champions League though is all about learning. Man City took seven years before they cracked it. Pep and De Bruyne had to go through heartbreak before they grew. And an Arsenal side full of 24-year-olds. No prior experience of the competition. At some level we showed we can compete, but ultimately not quite get over the line. Why well, are you surprised? You man wanted Project Youth. Project Youth means inexperience. You wanted an inexperienced manager. And you expected, now you want to point out the fact that we're inexperienced. This is exactly why I didn't want Project Youth. This is exactly why I didn't want a manager that isn't good enough to get me over the line in, in, in Europe. Also, this whole narrative, this bukaria about, oh, it's a lesson learned. No, we should have a plan B regardless of Champions League. You're supposed to have a plan B even in the league. You're supposed to have a plan B regardless of what competition you're in to nullify. You're supposed to have a striker. Now these men are talking about a striker. You men were justifying Kai Havertz. You're justifying Eddie Nketiah. You're telling me Jesus is about what he does off the ball. You men weren't saying this before, but now we need, now we need experience. Now we need world-class players. He even said, I said it with chest, that Saka's world-class. Yeah, you said it with chest. And I know you got a lot of that. I can tell you got a lot of that. You know what I mean? This Bombay Charlie Sloth. I'm sick and tired of this Bukaria, bro. I'm sick and tired of this, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm sick and tired of these guys 
talking rubbish and then flip-flopping, but they make it seem like, oh, no, you know, one thing that we learned, no, we've been telling you this the whole season, Philo that but you didn't want to listen. You didn't want to listen. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of him, bro. He can sit there with his Ali G cap. I'm tired of this Philo that but they're talking rubbish, bro. Talking hella rubbish. How come it's okay now to call these things out when we've been saying that? And then we were called negative. Go down to Tottenham. You don't get behind the team. You don't back the team. So, listen, by their own standards, I guess he's not a top gooner then. Because now he's criticising the team. You wasn't allowed to criticise before. No, but now it's fashionable crit- now. That's what oh, I'm saying. It's fashionable. It's, right it's only when it's fashionable. You know, when it's not fashionable, you got to go with the grain, bro. You got to be a sheep, unfortunately. You know, when you're the you, when you're no longer a sheep, but you choose to be a lone wolf, that's when you're the bad guy. Listen, the, the best thing about this video, I'm not going to lie to you, is that I don't know why he was narrating like he's he's Morgan Freeman, the North London Morgan Freeman. That's that's the only thing I took out of this video because I could have told you everything else he said in this video. We all knew already. So this wasn't new to me. But yeah, bro, it is what it is, bro. This is your fan base. You got to deal with that. Yeah. Ali Babs, bro. Ali Babs. Anyway, let's keep going. Sacking Mikel Arteta. Mikel Arteta has put Arsenal back in contention, right? Mm -hmm. For the last two seasons, we've challenged for the league. We were nowhere near it over the last, what, 15 odd years? Yeah. Yeah. And he will eventually get there. Nothing's guaranteed in life, right? But if you're gonna if you're gonna win a title, you've got to be in and around it every year. You've got to be you gotta be knocking on the door, right? And he's knocking on the door. We've well, seen so many like... manager changes, right? For so-called big managers, right? And mm. they've come in and they ain't done it. Yeah. Right? I, I'm trusting in this guy. He's 100%. he's got us back challenging. Cool. So how come you didn't have this energy for Una Emery if it takes time? You didn't give him Emery time. You're ready to get rid of him after one season. Almost won us the Europa League and was single-digit points in getting the top four to qualify for Champions League. When this guy finished eighth, you said, give it time. Cool. Man saying about, oh, he, he's going to get there. I didn't hear these men talk like this when it was Poch. Also a nearly man. Champions League final. Finished second in the league a couple of times. Huh? I didn't hear this talk for Poch. I didn't hear Arsenal fans saying, you know what, Tottenham, you should stick with him. You should stick with him. Yeah, he just needs more time, more players. He's, it's a learning curve. I didn't hear any of that. Yeah, man talking about learning curve and giving it time. It didn't take Conte too, many, too much time. He won it. It didn't take Tuchel too much time. He won the Champions League. There's plenty of managers that don't need that much time. It's crazy, but with this manager, it needs time. These men already put a time limit on Arteta because they said it took Klopp four years. This is the fourth year. This is the year, but now they want to move the goalposts and say it takes time. We're seeing changes. No, you man told me the time limit. You said it took, took Klopp four years. You Four know what it up. is, Nurse said? Uh, I was talking yesterday about actually Unai Emery. Unai Emery is getting Aston Villa to a semi-final for the first one at, at first time in, I think, 50 years, something like that. Some crazy stat like that. And when you look at his time since he's left Arsenal, he's one of you Europa Leagues with lesser sides, and now he's about to get into Champions League football with Aston Villa that were fighting relegation when he took over. So it's crazy how people pick and choose who to give the time and who not to give the time. And I feel like it goes down to set of sentiment and, and and weird emotional affiliation with, with former players and former club legends. Because I've seen that in my club happen with, with, with Ole not too long ago. And not, I'm not saying that Arteta's a club legend for you guys, but I feel like just the story behind it, that he's a former player and he was an assistant for Pep and now he's coming in and he's learning on the job. It's just like there's a weird emotional uh, uh, attachment to it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's like, I've never looked at anyone in my club, unless maybe like when I was younger growing up, because we all had our favorite players. But like once I became an adult, bro, I didn't really have any emotional attachment to anyone. You know, I'll be sad if someone who was a legend for my club is leaving. But it's just like, bro, if someone is not working and it's not it's not working, it's fine, bro. Like just move them on. The fact that they had that energy for Unai Emery, who has proven to be a winner, and they didn't have that for Arteta is just weird to me. It's so weird to me, bro. How's it going to look now when Unai Emery goes into the Champions League next season? Mind you, he got you to a final and his players let him down. You have a, you've been to zero finals since. Um, Can I ask you a question? Man United, when Jose Mourinho, he came to your club, didn't he win you the Europa League? He won us the Europa League the first season, yeah. Yeah, cool. And Would you say cup. that club, that team was in disarray? Would you say your club was in disarray? Yeah, 100%. Cool. In the first season, he won the Europa League, yeah? He won the League Cup. He won the Community Shield, but I don't really count that one. Community Shield, League Cup, and then Europa League final. So how much time does it take for a proven manager in a Man United club that everybody knows is in disarray, that's been run poorly, that doesn't make the right player um, sales, doesn't make the right signings at times, 
throws money all over the place, doesn't have a proper sporting director until recently. In his time, you didn't have a proper sporting director and he was able to win a Europa League. Seems like it didn't take him too much time to win trophies. Hey, we fired him after he finished second as well. He got a second against City. And the next season, obviously, it went worse. I'll be honest, we didn't progress like you guys did, but he got sacked anyways. So... It just and this, I, I, honestly, and this bro, is just... Man United that's in disarray. This is one of Man United where Mourinho had four years, seven hundred million pounds spent. Yeah, all the players and all the decisions that he wants, he wasn't backed the way Arteta was backed. When he wanted Ozil out, he was gone. When he wanted Abamian out, he was gone. When he wanted to sell Balogun, he was gone. Do you know what I'm saying? When he wanted to buy any player, even Kai Havertz, the, the club backing him in every signing that he wants, and he was able to deliver. Within the first year, that is the difference between a proper winner and somebody that's learning on the job. Learning on the job, bro, even though he had to do everything himself. Man United has suffered with player power. Man United has suffered with bad recruitment. Man United has suffered, yeah, with not having a proper footballing structure at that football club. Yeah, the fan base all over the place, you know, half of them believe in, in the process and in the ownership. The other half doesn't. That's with a Man United club, yeah, that have ownership taken dividends out of the club, taking money out of the club, not reinvesting in the stadium. He was still under all that circumstance that they tried to paint for Arteta, which is why he can't win anything. He was able to win in Europe. Yeah. Since Unai Emery, when's this bum ever got us even, even to a Europa League final? Because Unai Emery could do it with a team everybody agrees wasn't good enough. And he was able to get to, to a final. He was able to get to a final. This manager, Arteta, they're talking about learning curve. This guy's getting eliminated by Olympiacos. Uh, uh, sporting uh, 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 teams like that, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, Unai Emery himself knocked you out two seasons ago or three seasons ago. Forget yep. that. I think it was uh, Villarreal. He knocked you out. <laughs> and then he cost you the league this year with Austin Villa. <laughs> so you don't even have to go look at the other teams. You can just look at the teams that Unai is, is, is managed against you guys. He seems to always have Arteta's number. <laughs> crazy. Great how it works. Tuchel going into a Chelsea team. Nobody, even I didn't, I didn't expect that they could do it. He still did it. Lampard, Lampard ripped them off. They're youngsters. They're young. It's going to take time. They're not ready to win yet. He got them into being winners within one season. Conte went to Chelsea. He was playing Victor Moses as left back. I think left back or right back. He was playing that as a full back, bro. Victor Moses, I think he was like 35 years old, 32 years old, bro. And this guy squeezed the last juice out of Victor Moses, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? To win them a league title. What a man talking to me about, about it takes time. Do you know what I'm saying? When Leicester won the league, did they go out there and spend £700 million to win the league? Yeah, I knew everybody fought, fell off, yeah? But we could have taken advantage of that, and we didn't. So many opportunities has passed us by to win the league, and we don't take it. When Leicester won it, yeah? When Wenger wasn't spending proper money. When we were selling all our best players to Man City and Chelsea and teams like that. When we are giving our best player to Man United to have a, a great farewell to, to, to Fergie, yeah? Here you go. We'll hand you... We'll hand you um, We'll hand you our best striker, Van Persie. There you go, win the league. But man, I say give right it here. time. He's on my wall right here for a reason. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Stuffy. Thank you. <laughs> Gabriel Saliba and Tommy Yasu. Tommy Yasu is finally back. No more Zinchenko. Tommy Yasu can have a masterclass. Leroy Sane, you ain't getting past him. You ain't getting past Tommy Yasu. And Mif the two agents. Zinchenko and Jesus, not in the lineup. Arteta, you've been watching my videos. Arteta, you've listened. Play this team, and we're going to beat Bayern Munich, and he has played this team. I'm confident. We're going to keep a clean sheet. You guys know that for sure. We're going to keep a clean sheet. We're going to win 1-0. I'm so confident. There's no way we're going out now. This team is world class. This team can win the Champions League. And this team will prove you guys wrong tonight. I can't wait for it. Let me know your prediction in the comments. And who's going through between Arsenal and Bayern Munich? World-class team, yeah? You know, after we got eliminated, he put the Real Madrid shirt on and was celebrating Real Madrid beating uh, City. I saw. I saw. I saw. I saw. And I saw you were on an emergency stream. Hey. Emerg yeah, 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 yeah. On Lee's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but who's the toxic and negative? And who's the real fan? I'll take... <laughs> I'm so done, bruv. I'm so done, Buffy, bro. I'm so done, bruv. Yeah? Listen, you're I'm a fake so... fan, and you were sitting there. I saw you. You were upset. I saw the 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 tone that you spoke into in that day. I was like, yo, that's not Northside. Northside is broken today. He's generally upset. And then I saw him celebrating with a Madrid jersey on. That was insane to me, bro. That is insane to me.
to go out and say, yes, we beat. So saying we, we're going to go get number 15. Oh, my God, bro. Oh my, I'm not going to lie, bro. That was the most cringe thing I've ever seen. It was so cringe. I couldn't believe it, man. Well, Postman Pat's going to do what Postman Pat does, isn't it? You know what I mean? He's a messenger for, for these top gooners, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm done with this kidney bean head, bro. I'm telling you, bro. I'm done with this guy, but with this falafel head. I'm, 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 we're moving on, bruv. More complex than just we don't have depth, because we do, but it's how we use it, why we don't use some of it, and just the honest truth about where the club is at. This season, we have eight outfield players that have played fewer minutes than Aaron Ramsdale. Now, some of those have been injured. Rat Timber, fine, injured all season. Cedric, El Nenny, that's part of the long-term process of overhauling the squad that you can't do within one, two, or even three years. They'll be gone this summer. But you look at Partey, you know, he has been available the last few weeks. He's just not playing. Smith Rowe, why did we keep him to use him less than Aaron Ramsdale? Reese Nelson, again, give, give him a new contract to use him less than Aaron Ramsdale. Fabio Vieira, less than two years ago, we spent £35 million on him. And we've used him less than Aaron Ramsdale. And then, of course, with someone like Nguyen Airy, academy player that's coming through, he'll get there. But... To have eight players playing that fewer minutes is a massive problem. As is this. Yeah. Arsenal players who have started 40 or more matches this season, seven of them, Gabriel, Saliba, Erdegaard, White, Rice, Saka and Havertz. Had Martinelli been fit all season, he probably would have done as well. Man City players who have started 40 matches this season, none. None. I thought he's a young Pep. I thought he's learning from Pep. I thought he's the young Pep. I thought we had a bench that can, that, that can do a job. When I was calling to get rid of this bench, you man are saying that they can do a job. You're saying that there's improvements. You're saying that there's Champions League experience. You man are telling me that they, they've learned from last season. Now you man want to be saying the same thing I've been saying. Now you man want to look at burnout. Now that everything is done, yeah, this young Piz Filuda Puta now wants to be saying what I'm saying, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Get out of here, man. Get out of here. It's funny how much these lot are flip-flopping. And I will be documenting all the flip-flops, bro. All of them. All of them saying what we're saying. It will be documented. Hey, bro, They're going to hate awesome. my channel, bro. Because my channel is going to be full of receipts, bro. Receipts after receipts after receipts, bro. They're not going to be able to say anything, bro. Hey, I'm gonna, I have to deal with the, my fan base, Staffy, yeah? Like it's a court of law, bro. <laughs> court of law. Man, I have to come with the facts, bro. Big boy facts, bro. Like I'm trying to take down the mafia, bro. Listen, you know your, what I'm your, your channel is like... Um... My grandma's purse, every time I used to open her purse, I'd see all the grocery receipts. There was a lot of them. I never knew why she had all these receipts, but now I understand. She just wants to keep evidence like you do. The, the amount of receipts that you have here is crazy. And listen, bro, I actually have no words, bro. I actually have no words. Listen, I see, I see most of Rory's takes. I try to think that he's calm. But listen, as I said earlier, for people to be saying... The, the thing after it already happens, it's 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 really a bit too late. You get what I'm saying? Like, when you put your neck on the line saying these things early and you catch hate for it, and then eventually people realize, yeah, yeah, you was preaching. Well, it's too late, is it? It's too late. It's always easy to say it after. Like, in the aftermath, bro, it's a little bit easy. It's easy when everyone sees the same thing. But when, when you're one of few that's seen it, people don't give you credit for that. So... It's your fan base, bro. I don't know what to tell you. This is what you got to deal with. I don't got to deal with that. Yo. Why are you looking like that? My club's shit at the moment. You want me to jump on smile, smiles and get to run around the circle and do some star jumps? Uh, <laughs> like my brothers, bro. Both our clubs are in the, the, the Shrek swamp, bro. You know what I mean? Oh. Shrek and Fiona, bro. We're in the mud, bro. Together. <laughs> <laughs> nice of you guys to join me. I've been I've been in the in the I've been the swamp alone for 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 the the whole season. So it took you guys some time to meet me here, but we're here together. I hate, I hate my life right now. I hate I hate it. If I'm honest. Hey, rightfully so. Hey, hey, wait. Let me ask you something, Mons. While we're on this, before we continue the 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 clips, are your fan base blaming Pep for for the Europa League loss too? Because everyone keeps saying, oh, but he couldn't win enough because it's in the Pep era. I didn't see Pep in the Europa League. Did you guys lose to Man City or was it Atalanta? Tell me about that. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the guy to ask the question. No, said who was who they lose to? Did they, did, did Pep coach Atalanta? Bro, we lost. We lost. We didn't lose to Pep. We lost. Girl, to stand up. You know what I'm saying? Stand we, up. At the, uh... you know what I'm we lost to the Migos. That's what we lost to. We lost to the Migos. Wait, Lewis is messaging in the private chat. I don't know. If and Aquaman. It. We lost to Aquaman as well. 
What what's the area code, Staffy? Do you know the area code? I said there's like area codes in that in, the, in America. What's the area oh, code? Oh, a- Atlanta, ATL. Yeah. I don't know yeah. the area code. I don't live there, but it's uh, a... why, why would you know the 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 the, the, co- the postcodes to flip in? It is it is because it's pretty known. To be no no no, bro, the city's on the water. It's in the ocean. It's in the ocean. Vaco man, man. I don't know. It's I don't know who we lost to. Did we lose to the Migos? Or did we lose to flipping Aquaman and that? I don't know. I don't know where we are. And Liverpool are just in a pit of shit right now. And no open play goals in four games. But listen, hey, let's let's continue laughing at Arsenal right now. I feel like I don't want to interrupt what's going on here. Yeah, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? Don't worry about it. Don't go anywhere, man. We've got time for you, bro. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, that's 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 great. But let's let's hey, let's let's listen. Let's listen to the Kool-Aid, man. I, I, that's why I'm here. I love Kool-Aid. So uh, let's listen to it, man. Oh, you love Kool-Aid? Love Kool-Aid, man. Listen. Don't worry about that, man. We got, we got, we got, we got enough time for you, lot. Yeah, don't worry about that. We're adding Lewis right now. Don't worry about that, my guy. You know yeah. what I mean? We all got time. We all got time here. We're gonna add him right there. You know what I mean? Make him nice and comfy. We're gonna move this over here. You know what I'm saying? Move that there. Save that there. Do that. You know what I mean? We we'll make space for everyone. Big up, my guy. Big up, big up, guys. What are we saying? Bunch of mud brothers. You telling me? Nice to be Back accompanied again. by my mud brothers. Bro, don't oh, be so depressed, man. You know what I'm What you... Like, shit, no, man. I don't even know, like... Oh. I've just got monologues. I've got monologues for Liverpool for days. I've got monologues. Oh, I've got monologues for Arsenal. Oh, I've got monologues for Arsenal. Don't don't you worry. Martinelli, that Brazilian Mendes lang. I've got... I've got monologues for him. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're crap right now, so... And then... This is, mud, this, is a, this is the mud. I call it like a mud reunion. Is what yeah, well, we're all crap. We're all crap. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, we're bad. You are crap. But we're just... Hey, you, you know what? We're unbeaten in eight. We are unbeaten in eight. Then yeah, that's the, the most show. criminal unbeaten run I've ever seen, by the way. That when the Premier League part, you're unbeaten run. If anyone's actually seen Chelsea's unbeaten run, it's criminal. It's There's two wins in there. There's two. I think that's three. <laughs> So you all count the Everton one now. That's free. Yo, there's also that's... two draws to Burnley and Sheffield United up the Chelsea and Brentford as well. Big up. Oh, yeah, let's Brentford. continue the Arsenal roles because I know, I know you man enjoying it. So let's continue it. Oh and yeah. Then we'll get on to everybody else's team. It's my favorite saying. It's my favorite saying. They don't help themselves, do they? A Champions League journey to be proud of. But before we get into last night's game, let's just analyze this. They have beaten PSV, Law, lost to Law, beat Sevilla twice, battered Law at home as they should, drew to PSV, and they scraped past Porto in the round 16 on penalties. Then got beaten pretty comfortably by the second best team in Germany, one of the worst buying teams we've seen in 10 odd years in the quarterfinals. A Champions League journey to be proud of. Where they were pathetic last night, I thought. First off, they were okay. Like Erdegaard was trying, they were at least probing. Then Bayern scored, and they almost then thought, "Oh, it's that's uh, we'll take the one 0 There was no urgency. There was no intent. This guy's spitting facts, bro. Yeah, he, hey, this isn't yeah. cool. Eh? Is, You're not proud is, of your journey. This You're is not proud war. of your journey. This is Fiji water. You know, your admin blocked me for trolling at that. <laughs> is it? Blocked by your whole Twitter. admin blocked me. Look, I'll show you right now. One sec. What said that? <laughs> Look, I'll just put it up on the share screen. What did you say for him to block you? All I what said did he, was... Did he not all say I said, Wait, wait. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. There we go. All I said was champions of Europe. You'll never sing that. And then I'm blocked. <laughs> Straight Mad. block. Mad. <laughs> oh, no, that's crazy, bro. That's they crazy. went, they I got, got slapped. Got blocked by Arsenal. That's not blocked bad. by Arsenal Twitter. No, no, that's crazy. Bro. I might but get listen, that framed. Man. No, sir, you should be, you should be, yeah, you should, bro, honestly. No, sir, you should be proud of it, bro. It's a journey to be proud of. You haven't been there for seven years. You made it back. You won one of your four knockout round games. You know, you beat old, the almighty Porto. You lost one game. Then lost to Bayern and then also drew to Bayern. So be proud, bro. Why are you not proud, bro? Be proud. No, I'm not proud, bro. I'm not <laughs> proud. My mom was never proud of me if I failed, bro. She was only proud when I win, bro. 
You know what I mean? So, nah, bro. You know, you're the only English club that got knocked out of Europe and said something to be proud of. Every other one said we're out of the Europa League, out of the Champions League, out of the Europa. Our journey comes to an end. And then Arsenal come out like, it's a journey to be proud of. Like, I, I get why you're so sick with everything to do with Arsenal, because that menta that just shows the mentality from top to bottom. Oh, it's OK. We made our first quarter final in God knows how long. <clears throat> That's not progress. So I people telling me as well, if you make it to the FA Cup final, will you be potching? No. Number one, is that a trophy? Number one, I need more than just that trophy anyway. I'm still potch out. But no, whatever sounds the best. I hear it, bro. They 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 think that we want to be annoyed at our clubs and we want to be mad. Nah, bro, we want to win, bro. If the club gives us something to be happy about, we'll be happy, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? We're not just going to be... Uh, it's just crazy, bro. But this this Nigerian fan, he's hilarious. I'm going to get him up. You man are going to crack up. Look at this guy, yeah? Uh, Mr. David, that's his name. Mr. David, look at him. <laughs> I said Mr. David. What, what is wrong with that? that? You have the opportunity again to win league. Nah, I cannot go home. They are already calling me. I can't go. And I made a mistake to wear this jersey out today. Because they are waiting for me. <laughs> right now, and I have exams at hand. Tomorrow I have exams. And they, are, they, are, they, are, they just... I can, just because Liverpool lose, you lost. You lost woefully 2-0 at your home. 2-0 at Emirates Stadium. The same stadium that we have not considered goals since this January. We've only considered only four. Till now. Till, since the beginning of this year. And you're just shipping... Uh, please, uh, I don't know, I don't know, but I feel Ateta should go back. The last time I said, let us sack Ateta, Ateta should be sacked. People thought I was joking. This near success syndrome, I will not be a party to it. When you are supposed to do the, when you are supposed to do the right thing, what is, is part of injured? Is part of injured that they are calling? Is part of injured? I've been dodging the scores. <laughs> oh, man, man. He the guy shook. with the mic almost laughed, bro. <laughs> yeah, I told him. Man said, "I've been dodging these calls. I got exams tomorrow. <laughs> I got exams tomorrow." He is, oh. he is genuinely dreading going home, bro. This peak. Oh my god! Look at it, Look at his eyes, bro. Look at his eyes. <laughs> that is dejection. <laughs> He's like, when are you coming back up? He's like, bro, I can't, bro. The man never waiting for me, bro. Mums is by the door. Mums is by the door. <laughs> so they're waiting for me. <laughs> I can't go home. That is killing me. Oh, I gotta laugh, bro. If I don't laugh, I'm gonna cry, bro. Like, you know when it gets past being like raging, like just whatever. Just accept, it, like. accept where you are, kind of thing. Yeah. Now this is us. This is what we are. Great. Hey, hey, it's I don't need life. that energy. You got Man City tomorrow. I believe in you. I believe in you. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in you. That's all we have. <laughs> all we have is is Especially on no. long balls. That's, that's exactly what they did. If you look at it, they are, they are tired. You keep playing the same people. You keep playing the same set of people, the same set of people, the same set of people. Rotate the team, Kanuna. We have squad depth now. Rotate the team. Uh, 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 Rice, where's the Rice? Sorry, Rice, sorry. You came to Arsenal. You play all the matches, even uh, Village uh, Cup. You will play all. No rest. <laughs> no, nah. If you do like this, now nah, that means I, I'm not. I don't think I'm in the right frame of mind to continue this interview. Please, I'm. I, I'm... <laughs> that, that we've been there, been there. <laughs> Oh, you've been there, Lewis, yeah? You, you... Yep. I've been in that frame. I was, yeah, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Bro, he spoke for like five minutes and then he said, I can't continue this interview. <laughs> oh, oh, end the stream, Dave. Oh, it's my God. Now, I can't even lie. The funniest one for months, yeah, is when he goes, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Man got up off the stream, started breathing, walking, pacing around the room. <laughs> Man's going to breathe. <laughs> Listen, you, man. We'll speak about you guys, isn't it? You man's had your laughs. We'll speak about you, man. We have to go with first with Liverpool. Who wants to go first? Wait, wait, wait can I say something speak first? Why can't we speak about, about Arsenal? One second, uh, before we speak about anyone, can, can, can you just start at the band that, that pussy Yanko 
in the, in the in the chat because he's been you know you've been on my what all sh- all stream and I told you to hop off my you know what and now you're saying say stop getting Americans on this hold this bro I'm on this and you're not you fucking pussy so hold that <clears throat> up the Charles uh, why do we have to can't, wait why can't wait no we are gonna go with Arsenal you know swing with Arsenal already no. No, no, no. We must move because of because time. The thing is, it's it's hard. hard because of time. Because of time, we must move on. Well, That's just difficult I, to I, cook I, north I, side. I can cook Arsenal, Arsenal, but I can't cook north side. Can, can I cook? Yeah, yeah. Can I, yeah, but I'm not here to cook north side. I'm here to cook Arsenal for what three minutes. Oh, okay. Cool. You know when to cook oh. Arsenal stage is yours. I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna mute. Go on, go. Oh, Lily, because <laughs> you're, you're not allowed to cook Arsenal north side. That's why you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to because it's toxic and negative. You know what I'm saying? That's you're not allowed to do it. But whilst it's, it's fine with us. Listen, guys, Arsenal Football Club, what you guys need to remember, similar to what Staffy said, um, now this sudden realisation that, you know, there's no X-Factor players, that there's no actual world-class players, that realisation is redundant now. Because we tried to tell you this before. We tried to tell you this when we said you barely got past Porto. We tried to tell you this the last time we saw Martinelli have a, had a, have a good game. Does anyone else know when Martinelli last had a good game? No? Um, yeah, he 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 he's the equivalent of, of he he's the Brazilian Joel Campbell. He's the Brazilian Mendes Lang, whatever you guys want to call it. He's one of those guys now. Yeah, he's got an actual with a bit more jogger, Benito. He's got just a bit more jogger, Benito. It's as simple as that. Yeah, people don't want to hear it. Well, I'm here to tell you. Yeah, I'm here to tell you. Next time, please show the European stage some respect. I don't care if this was the worst Bayern Munich team in in so long. It makes it worse for Arsenal fans. There were no Bayern fans. They had no Davis. They had no Coman. They had no. Um, they had no. Uh, what's his name? Gnabry, Cbiz. You know what I'm saying? Looking up. No Davis. Not none of these guys. Also, none Tuchel guys. serving his notice period. Yeah, Donny has Donny has left the building like mentally, like he's checked out. That's a bunch of leaguers over. Season's it, over. It's a checked out Bayern Munich team. Checked out. And they still did the, you know what? You guys might be good, but we, we've we just been there and done that, to be honest. We've just been there and done that. The fact that man have not been in this comp- competition for seven years and think man can just rock up, rock up and sit with the big boys and do your combined 11s and, you know what I'm saying, talk about how this player is world class. Who, 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 who did a combined class. 11? Mention him. Who who did that? Oh, oh Egal. <laughs> Listen, he knows. He knows. He knows. Uh, it's as simple as that. That semi-final was set up perfectly for Arsenal Madrid, though. No, per- perfectly, but at the end of the day, like these well, men are probably the, the same Kool Aid drink because they're now going to sit there and go, you know what? Maybe going out of the Champions League, it was a if it was a good journey, it was a good run, and guess what? Now we have more time to focus on the Premier League because Man City don't play and they got more games to play than us. Excuse me. These lot can draw positivity like blood from a stone. It is insanity, actual insanity. Huh? It's like when. You know, it's like when they went to uh, the Etihad and I got called toxic and negative, actually, even as a rival fan. I got called toxic. I got called je- I'm, oh, jealous of one of them as well. They called me jealous. They called me jealous. I wish I had Arsenal's team. I wish I had these players and whatever they would do. And I said, listen, the only way to beat Heritage is to catch big boy teams when they're wounded. The reason City won the champs is because they caught Madrid when they were wounded. All Madrid were last year, well, it was just Vinicius. That's all it was. Vinicius was the threat. You stop Vinicius, you stop Real Madrid. They were wounded. Real Madrid don't even have a striker this year. They're still very good, but they don't even have a, they don't have a striker this year. You see what I'm saying? But Bayern Munich, yeah, in, in, forget about the Heritage for a second. They were wounded. That is how you beat Heritage. That is how Chelsea did it. You know what I'm saying? That is how Porto done it. And that is how Arsenal could have done it this season and how City done it last season. You catch these men when they're wounded, when they have injuries, out of form, and then you capitalise. But you failed. Especially when you're in four months. Let's exactly. not forget uh, yeah. that. On top You've of that, been in top. your best form. Yeah, because all I hear is three goals conceded in 2024. I'm sorry, it only takes one goal to lose a game. Thanks. <laughs> So, so, so all these statistics being the best at this, the best at that, the best at this, the best at that. Oh, so these are uh, these are some of the trophies that Arsenal fans are going to take home this season. That we took four points off Liverpool trophy, that we took four points off Man City trophy, and the least goals conceded in the league with the best defensive record trophy. Oh, and don't forget that Golden Glove as well. That Golden Glove that De Gea also won after being as shit as he was last year. Because they because they're going to think they're leaving something, when actually in actuality they're going to go into the fifth season trophyless. 
Prothelus. Forgotten by the ages. So, of course, are they going to go and challenge next year? Probably. But as it seems, what they're doing now is a failure. It is a no, failure. No, it's a learning curve. It's a learning oh, curve. Oh, dear. We learn. It's a learning hey, listen, curve. Lewis, All I heard right. that on A-listers, and Griggs had the best response. He's like, what did you learn? You went from second to second. <laughs> I, I can't believe he said that. I tried to bring it back as well. You refused to acknowledge it. You knew he said some stupidness with that. Like, and, and again, we're, we're day Learning 50, curve, bro. Lewis, we are day 50,406 without a Champions League for Arsenal Football Club. That's 1.2 million hours without a Champions League. It's actually seven and a half billion minutes. But anyway, that's fine. If I go into how many oh seconds, my goodness. start going into standard form and all that stuff. I don't want to bore you guys with mathematics. But listen, this is this is what it is with Arsenal Football Club. And unfortunately, Northside's probably going to have to sit there over the next few days and he's probably going to have to listen to some dross about how they're still in the title race and there's still a lot of football to be played um, and that, you know, it's okay because they've made progress. You've made progress. Hey, it's all right though, right? There you go, Northside. You can. Also, by the way, Arteta's saying we now need a thirty to forty goal a season striker is just is just baffling to me. What did what, you just gave us sixty five million for Bantz? Yeah, but yeah, but signs Kai Havertz and puts him up. And also needs a midfielder as well. But like, spend hundred million. Why, why did you give us that money? Why? But, but didn't you guys have a Galactico? You signed up. You spent hundred million on Declan Rice. So it's like. Only for him to get wait, only for him to get <laughs> dominated by Lima and Goretzka. The finished because they call Goretzka finished as well. By the way, they call Goretzka finished, Kimmich finished, Lima's meaty. Boy, it took him four years. You got rid of a Bamiang, the only striker we've had in recent times that can score 20 goals a season. You don't replace him. You keep on in Ketia, that's never scored not even 15 goals in a league season. You get Jesus, that's never been a gunman, even while goals. he was at City. Not the answer. Then you go and buy Kai Havertz. Not the answer. Never been a gunman. Now you realise. It's crazy. Listen, all the, I'm going to let you lot keep cooking. All I'm going to say quickly, make sure you're liking and subscribing. Make sure, more importantly, you're liking and subscribing to the boys. All the boys is links to their channels in the title. Make sure you're doing all of that. Do you know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, our fan base, yeah, the majority, make us have to hold all this smoke. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have to hold it, bro. So... Who's next, man? Who's next? Staffy, Carefree, who, who do you want? Who, 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 yeah, I just wanted to mention as well, all, all the scapegoats weren't starting this time. No City boys. No City boys. No, no, no Zinchenko. No Gabriel Jesus. A and they still couldn't get the job done. Starboy. They want to add Starboy into those world-class conversations. If you want to be in the world-class conversations, you have to rise. You must rise. When the no, team needs you. In the first leg. Oh, yeah, yeah. He got that one moment. He got that one moment. But then could have, gone in, could have won the game for them, but he decided to dive. No, no, and also I just want to... No, no, we want to dive. We want to dive. Oh, want to dive. Listen, Lucy, your corners also have to beat the first man. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ideally. Otherwise, you're moving like Mount, or you're moving like Gallagher, or you're moving like Havertz. All these other meaty guys, everyone tries to pop there. Speaking of Havertz, by the way, all those ats I was getting, all those messages um, Chelsea fans are getting about, oh, thank you for get for giving us your best player. Can we give you more money? We signed your best player. They, I haven't heard any of that in the last. Did they send more money? Did they send more money yet? No, no. no I, I, the option's still open. They know our bank details. They've dealt with us before, but we haven't received anything yet. We haven't even had a message back recently. Like you just seen, I've got the whole Arsenal admin blocking me. The whole Arsenal admin. But, but what, what what happened to Havertz shouts? What happened to Havertz shouts? Like that guy went straight back to being the same Havertz that we've seen at Chelsea. Because guess what? He hasn't changed. All he's got is more physical. Nothing else. Yeah, you're winning a couple more duels. Well, well worth the 65 million. Like we've been saying, if it is not a cutback, if it is not a header, you are not getting a damn thing out of him. And you guys are learning the hard way. But don't worry, I've already seen you guys have fallen into the same traps that Chelsea fans have fallen into. You guys are now praising him for the bare minimum. Saw people propping in play, bringing in a Nintendo Switch onto the plane to Germany. Because that, that's where this fan base is at. That's where that fan base is at. 
But hey, Arsenal as a whole, meaty. You did well with the defensive side. Like, defence will only get you so far, but you need your attack to at least pull something out of its arse. And the manager. Oh, oh, we've already been saying about Mikel Arteta. He, he constantly fails to deliver on the big stage. The game management never seems to improve. And now your second halves are getting worse. But you won't get rid of him. So you guys will be back here this time next year after drinking the exact same Kool-Aid. But none of this is directed at you, Northside. I know you've just been struggling through this for the past five years. I do feel for you. If your fan base was at least a little bit more tolerable, we wouldn't hate them as much. But here we are. Here we are. Also control. You guys control games, so it's fine. Yeah, you got to dominate possession. It, bro. Bro, listen, I hear it, bro. I know, I know it's not aimed at me. And the chat already know. You guys are the real one. You know who this is aimed at. You know what section of the fan base this is aimed at. So... Mm -hmm. You man keep cooking, bro, because they deserve this. I'm not. I'm, do you man see me hold back on my fan base? You man do what you gotta do, bro. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of their crap, just like you guys are sick of them. I know for different reasons, not because you support the club. You just you're sick of them running up their mouth on all social platforms, and then when it goes like this, they're all quiet. Where, where where's all the videos gone about Arsenal are scary? Those are dried up. Those are dried up. People say that I do things for clickbait. There was a, there was a content creator. I'm not gonna out him because he's not not a bad guy. But he told me, yo, if you just do Arsenal are scary, you know what I mean? But I said, yo, I, I, I said, yo, you ain't, you ain't, you're ain't, you not linked to this club. You're not a supporter of this club. Yeah, but if I wanted to get onto, how can I get every, each video to get 20, 30,000 views? I could have jumped onto that if I'm just about getting views. I refused and I stuck to my, my thing. I said, listen, you're a rival. You do you. I ain't doing that. Do you know what I'm saying? But my club, I'm not selling out how I feel about my club. You ain't got no, you ain't got no loyalty to this club. So you could, you can do exactly what you want to do, and I saw so many people doing it. Do what you got to do. Do you know what I'm saying? But the Arsenal fans that also got along with that, the Arsenal are scary. You man are the mugs. Rivals are going to do rivals things. Rivals are free to do whatever they how, how they want. They don't support my club. Yeah, they can do all of that. But for the getting along with, oh, Arsenal are scary. Arsenal are unbeatable. Nobody's stopping Arsenal. And this and that, bro. You man got to hold it. I'm not seeing no more videos from you, man. It's crazy. Stuffy, floor's yours, bro. First of all, I just want to start with the fact that I canceled my loan to Arsenal. I you guys were the least uh of the of the shit that I had to deal with. Um obviously I don't like Monster's team more and I don't like City more for obvious reasons. So uh, I tried to seek shelter with you guys and I was offered a loan and uh, I terminated the loan because you guys promised me trophies, you promised me um a league and champions league double. And uh, they promised me that you guys would take over a uh, club's legacy in one season, but I didn't see any of that. So I terminated my loan and I went back to my mother club uh, because apparently I'm two games away from potentially winning a trophy. So funny enough, after the shit season that I've had, I actually now have a closer chance to win a trophy than Arsenal, um, which is why everything you guys said was facts. You know, sometimes you got to hold your reins, hold your horses, relax, just wait for the season to end. Don't be celebrating drawing European heritage clubs like it's a WWE promo. I'm about to get revenge. And then, you know, the the the, the theme song hits in the background like it's John Cena and you're about to whip uh, Byron's ass. That, that, that doesn't happen in the real life. It really doesn't. You know, hold off on the combined 11s, hold off on all that stuff. Because that's not how Europe works. You know, we've seen worse teams win Champions Leagues. You know, the Lewis could sit here and tell you his best Chelsea team in, that he probably watched didn't win a Champions League. And some of the worst teams, or the lesser teams, I should say, actually ended up winning the Champions League. You know, his best team lost to me in 2008, but then a, a lesser version won it in mm -hmm. 2012 against Bayern in Bayern. So it just tells you how football works sometimes. Uh, but listen, bro, we already said you don't deserve this humbling, but a lot of other people do. You know, maybe if you wore a Real Madrid jersey or a Barcelona jersey or something else after the game, you'd become a little bit more fashionable. But your fame base, bro, a large majority of it absolutely deserves it. They're, I've said this before. I said they're like, listen, when you're a virgin and you bag your first chick and we've bagged chicks in the past and we could sit here and confidently talk about it, it's different for us. We sit here and we tell you about European Cups that we've won. We'll tell you about leagues that we've actually seen our teams won, you know, and they haven't. That's why when they get excited and we tell them, bro, act like you've been here before. Act like you've been in this situation. Don't go to the club for the first time and drool over every chick you see. Just hold yourself 
have some composure. They got upset. They called us haters and they said, oh, why are you talking? Your team is playing like shit. So you guess what? Northside will tell you and everyone here will tell you. I criticize my team more than everyone else. So I actually have the right to call out and say that because I don't drink the Kool-Aid to my own team. So I could tell you also not to drink the Kool-Aid to your team. And when you do and you want to shit on me and say, well, my team is shit, shit and all that stuff. Hey, <laughs> I can tell you that I've seen a lot more trophies than you anyways, because I'm not that young. So I've seen the trophies and I could tell you when to hold your horses and not. But listen, they deserve it. People like Northside don't, but you guys do, the rest of you. So respectfully, the rest of the Arsenal fan base, you can hold that. But we'll go one more year and we'll see. Listen, I hope you guys actually keep Arteta one more year because I really don't think you guys will win anything under him. I think he's done a good job at Arsenal, but I think he reached his ceiling. I always thought he's a, a floor raiser. He's not a winner as a manager, you know, and he's doing stuff that I've seen Pep do in the past. Pep already elevated the, the way that he plays and he innovated new stuff. And you guys are still stuck to some of the old stuff that he does. You know, he was doing that false nine thing a few years ago. He was doing that inverted fullback thing a few years ago. He don't he don't do that no more. And he's winning a trouble doing that. And you guys are just trying to copy his old blueprint. Get to his new <clears throat> blueprint, at least if you want to do that. But respectfully, you guys can hold that. I just want to give you lot the words from Super Mikarteta. Yeah. Word to Staffy, the Spanish Joey from friends. After we <laughs> got eliminated from word. Bayern. Yeah. After we got beat by Bayern. This was his words. I just took. A couple lines. It's about six lines. You man, listen to this and, and give me your feedback. I'll go through the. I'll go through each line. I cannot find the words to uplift the team. That's the learning curve from this manager. After we're eliminated by Bayern. Second, line, think of what Pep said in this situation. That spark in the box is what you need to get the victory. This is my for that though. That spark in the box. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. How vague. It takes some clubs six, seven years to win the Champions League, but we came close. <sighs> What's the barometer for that? Some teams will take 60 years. They told me it took clock it took clock four years, and then they're still telling me give it more time. So let's not let's not go with this time scale because every time every time we hit the time scale and we haven't achieved, they move the goalpost to it's a learning curve. He 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 needs one more season. It's crazy. It didn't take uh, Tuchel at Chelsea six seven years to win the Champions League. By the way, Northside, let me just tell you this: ah. by the, by the next time you guys are going for it again, which I'll say next year you'll be going for the league again, with the spendings that you'll have this summer, you'll be close to a billion spent. A billion, because you're already over 700. Did you really clock that yet? We unlocked the billion-dollar bottle job slander name. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. so it's you can actually broke. say that. Listen, you can use that next year, Lewis. When they spend, just wait for them to hit a little bit over 200 million, whatever it is, in the summer. Then you can start running again. The the one billion nice. uh, red bottle jobs. It don't hit the like same, one, but you can still use it. Next quote from Super Mikarteta, our Spanish poet. We had big chances. Very rare at this stage of the Champions League. Really? How many chances did Dortmund have and they scored? How many chances did PSG have and they scored? Wait, it's rare to have big chances in a quarterfinal. Barca, 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 PSG, how many chances were there? How many chances did they score and how many chances was given? How many goals did Rafinha score and how many chances was given to him? How many chances did Vidinha not take his chances? Dortmund. Even after missing chances, did Sabitzer Wait, not score and still miss the chance? You know what I have a stat for you, actually. What are we talking about here? This quarterfinal has the most goals in Champions League history. No quarterfinal has ever seen more goals than this one. No way. Yeah? That's mad. I, don't, I, I forgot what number it was, but this, this quarterfinal had the most goals in history. And he's trying no, to gas He knows more than you, bro. He never won it, but apparently it's rare. It's rare. Like this guy's been in that stage in his career. Ever, what's he talking about? We should thank he's the never players been in this the journey. Team. So, the, so the he's whole journey the thing started with this manager. He said after the game, we should thank the players for this journey. Piss off, you prick! Piss off, man! About thank the players for this journey, you dickhead. Done with this guy, bro. He's a clown, bro. Thank, thank the, the players, players for this journey. journey, bro. Even a washed out, e e even Wenger on the decline at least got us to a semi-finals, bro. And you're telling me quarterfinals? Thank, I'm going to thank you for this journey. 
This guy's trying to gaslight it, bro. I thought we had the capacity to reach the semi-finals. Well, you thought wrong, so filo da puta, because we didn't get there. And why are you talking about reaching semi-finals? What kind of loser mentality? I thought we had the capacity to reach semi-finals. Why are you not talking to me about winning it? When does Una Emery talk like this? When does Pep talk like this? When does Klopp talk like this? I thought we had the capacity to reach semi-finals, bro. It's wow. Okay. It's okay. I thought Poch press conferences were bad. Same. With my board quote. All, he, all you need him to do is just blame it on injuries and inexperience, and then you just got the whole bingo set. Wow. Did he hold any accountability? Is there is there anything positive he said? Which Did he admit that this is a learning curve? Did he say, I learned this, this and that? Because that's what your fan base is telling me. They told me it's a learning curve. So well, I think he said the play everyone should be proud of the players, which yeah. is I don't know what but did you learn anything from that? I just want to see if he learned something. Like, hey, listen, I learned this next time we won't do that. Bro. He ain't learned nothing, Staffy, bro. He does the same thing. He ain't learned nothing, bro. Zinchenko wasn't working last season in a tight race. He, as soon as Zinchenko's fit, he's putting him back in the team. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't he doesn't learn anything. Havertz is, is actually doing something, something playing as a striker. He puts him in the midfield. How's that a learning curve? He's not learning, bro. Saka's... This is time after time we see Saka burn out at this stage of the season. He ain't learning, bro. He's not learning. Players that are in form like Trossard get benched for players that are not playing well, i.e. Martinelli, who's been dropping stinkers in the last couple of games. He'll bench him, bro. Bro, what, he ain't learning anything. This is a, a way from even talking about signings, bro. Just man management, bro. Like, it, listen... We, we haven't got much. We haven't got much time left. Let's move on to, to Liverpool. You know what I mean. Don't worry about that. What more can we say about Liverpool, bro? Come on. What more can I say? I'll go because I have a few minutes before I actually leave. Make sure you guys are leaving a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Listen, Mons is um, is, he's he's always my my rival. You know his team and my team. No matter how shit I am, I always love to see Mons's downfall. The meltdown that I've seen recently from his fan base is amazing. I've seen a lot of them, especially on my channel as well, coming out and saying that, you know what, uh, Klopp is actually not that great after all. He's battled this amount of finals. He's only won us one league. He's not an all-time great because he doesn't have the trophy cabinet for it. But listen, I love it. I love it because these guys, these guys thought they're getting a farewell. Now, I don't know who watches basketball here, but Draymond Green said it famously, you know, he said, you don't get that type of love. But he said it. He was talking about Kobe. He said, you ain't Kobe. Listen, club, you ain't Fergie. You don't get that type of love. There's no far farewell tour. They kept telling me they need a Europa League for him to have completed every trophy and won every trophy with Liverpool. And then I always heard him complain. Oh, yeah, but we're unlucky because we were in the Pep era. Well, I didn't see Pep beat you in the Champions League final. It was Madrid. I didn't see Pep knock you out from the, for, from the uh, knockout rounds. It was Atletico and whoever else, I don't remember. You know, I didn't see Pep in the Europa League yesterday. It was Atalanta. You know, Hussam came out infamous, infamously and celebrated. Do you not have the clip? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? When he celebrated and he was doing the dance, whatever this dance is. You know, I know the Arabs would disclaim him after this dance. That's not how we dance, you know, but... He was celebrating, saying, we rigged it. We rigged it. I told you I want Atalanta. You didn't tell me he was going to lose. You didn't tell me he was going to lose. You told me you rigged it and you were celebrating. What happened now? What happened now? Imagine this. Don't Imagine forget this. 4D chest. Don't forget. He said he's playing 4D chess to win major honors. Bro, this guy, bro, he, I don't know what he was doing, bro. This guy, he was not playing chess, bro. He was playing checkers. This guy, this guy was playing cards, bro. Playing cards and he he's lost. Playing dominoes, bro. He's playing dominoes with <laughs> Dominicans out in New York. <laughs> hey, listen, he was he was on the uh, at the hookah lounge playing dominoes with the with look the. Look at Vance! Look at Vance! Come back! Come back! I'm closer. Please come closer. Uh, listen, bro. Oh, their playing. farewell tour. Listen to this. Listen to this crazy stat, bro. Their farewell tour might end identical to the same season Ten Hag had his debut, a third place finish and a league cup. And a quarterfinal knockout from the Europa League. That is crazy, bro. Your farewell tour. They are gonna end the season. Northside, you know they're gonna parade him at the last game of the season. They're gonna they're gonna bring out his trophy that he won. And what trophy he's gonna have? He's gonna have the energy drink cup. 
the same one they mocked us for last year. They laughed at us. They laughed at us. I, I, I have all the receipts, bro. I have all the receipts. Sam was sitting out there making fun of us saying, oh, they were bringing out the national flags. Well, guess what? They're not going to be bringing out just the national flags. They're going to be parading Klopp in his last season with an energy drink. An if energy you drink. Receipts, bring it out. Judge Lewis would, would like to see it. Bring, bring it bro, forth. You, you know what it is? I need to send you these receipts. We're going to have a different stream. Okay. Can, let's, let's do this. When the season ends, let's have a recap season where we just expose everyone for everything they said. Not just Arsenal fans, everyone. We're just going to sit there and we're going to rate them. How about that? Because I'll send you those yeah. receipts and we can re re revisit them. I just want to see Club, first of all, with the energy drink. Monza, are you going to go? Are you going to go to the farewell tour, the last one? What, the farewell parade? Yeah, yeah are you going to be at the farewell parade, the last game? <laughs> He's going to pop up his Oyster card. Is your Oyster card topped up yet? So he can get that. <laughs> Listen, I still have my Oyster card since I was in England. I'll send it to you if you want it. It might have a few pounds still left on it. You can use it. Um, it depends, isn't it? Like, obviously, it depends. I'll go to my parade if Arsenal fans go to theirs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was hey. told, I was told book the date. Uh, told me to I, speaking of receipts, facts. But listen, Anna, listen. I'm being honest, isn't it? Like, I'm not going to... I take responsibility, but I also remain on a lot of the things I say about, about Liverpool. Listen, Northside, you've heard me say a lot about my club when we were winning and when we are losing. And do I usually switch what I say? Like, not really. Not really. Um, that doesn't mean I'm uncookable. I, I still believe that Liverpool could probably could have done the quad this season. I was the one. I said it from January. So before anyone says, oh, but Monts, you said you're going to do the quad. Yeah, I said it in January. And even then, I'm not saying we're going to do the quad because Liverpool are this world-class, amazing top two teams in Europe that Arsenal claimed they, Arsenal fans claimed they were. If you look at the Premier League, the free horse race is not because the Premier League is so good. Otherwise, at least maybe two teams would still be in Europe, by the way. I say that because whoever is the most convincing out of an unconvincing bunch will probably find themselves in the Premier League this year out of this free horse race. It's as simple as that. This is the best Arsenal, but the worst City and a mediocre Liverpool side. Stop acting like Liverpool are overachieving this year. Last year, was an, it was an anomaly. Liverpool finishing fifth was an anomaly. So why did Liverpool fans use last year as the parameter and are trying to say we overachieved? We overachieved. We didn't overachieve because we were trying to go for a quad the year before that. And then one, and then, do you know what I'm saying? And finished third and should have won trophies that season before. And then Champions League and Premier League before that. That fifth place was an anomaly. The only year we finished outside the top four. So stop using that as a parameter to say we overachieved to hide the fact that we have failed this year. Stop it. It's not cool. If anything, it's embarrassing. It's Guna esque. Stop it. Yeah? Listen, I didn't expect Liverpool to be in the title race this season because it was a new midfield. But once I find myself top at Christmas, expectations change. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. If you're top, at, if you're if you're top at Christmas, expectations have to change. You know what I'm saying? It's like if I go to if I go out one night, and I don't and you know I don't expect to put I don't expect to to, to chat to the the sexiest thing in the club, but but it's two o'clock in the morning now, and the sexiest thing in the club is all over me. Yeah expectations change now i'm on to something now i'm on to something because i've got a loudy on my left now i'm on to something you know what i'm saying i'm up to something now so what end of the night and i've got nothing with me i've got nothing on my arm or am i supposed to be like well i mean when i went well on my way to the club i wasn't expected to have a nice thing anyways no <laughs> no i found myself in a position where i was with a nice loud beanie so now this is this is the difference this is the difference. Stop being okay with this stuff. A Carabao Cup, obviously, we know it's not good enough, but it's not like uh, it's it's annoying because Darwin Nunes to say Darwin Nunes is crap is now the fashion. It's now fashionable to say he's crap. It's now fashionable to say he can't finish. It's now fashionable that you know his goals aren't going to take us over the line. Was it fashionable when we were top of the league? No, it wasn't. All I heard was thirty-one GA, twenty-five GA, thirty-one GA. But when I called him a flat trap bully, you could be toxic and negative, just like just like Noah said, you could be negative, you could be toxic, and you said I'm hating on our players and I'm not supporting them. I'm sorry, but running around like a headless chicken does not gain my support. It does. He needs more than that. 
it's a mixture of both. Don't get me wrong. If you are, Apparently you have to work, respect the hard work. Yeah, well, yeah. Not I, to I, ruin I, your I, monologue. I just got to shout I, out, you guys. I got to go. But listen, big up, big up to everyone in the chat. Make sure you guys up, leave brother. a like on the video. Big up, Mosef, for having me. Bonds, up, Steffi, Lewis, I'll see you guys oh. later. Peace. I, 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 but, like, I, love, I love when my players try their hardest and, and fight for the badge, but I'm sorry. That is standard requirements to sign for my football club. If you are not going to fight for the badge, <clears throat> run around until you can't run anymore, then why are you here? You know what you signed up for on the dotted line. So I'm not going to overpraise you for it, but I am going to be like, okay, this is cool. Now, what else can you bring? What technical ability do you actually have? Do you actually bring to the table? You know? So again, like, I'm not going to sit here and, and cast Klopp and say he's suddenly not good enough and rare tear tear. Like, listen, there are certain games where Klopp substitutions haven't worked, but we've actually, I think we've, we've, we've got around 20 something points from losing positions this season. So it's actually a mixture of, Starting out poorly, which could be down to defensive tactics, but also brilliant tactical substitutions and tweaks in game. So it's actually a bit of both. So it depends which side you want to go with it. If you want to crash it on clock, I'm not going to fight you guys over your opinions on that. But what I would say is Liverpool are the architects of our own downfall. Yeah. Arsenal at, at Anfield. Trent hits the bar when it's 5 on 2. Man United at the, in, the, in the FA Cup. 5 on 2. We can't put the ball in the back of the net. Man United at, um, at Old Trafford. 5 on 2. Can't put the ball in the back of the net. Manchester City absolutely oiled them up, greased them, and belts to ass, bro. Belts to ass. Wet willies and all them things there. Wedgies, bro. We gave them noogies for 90 minutes, but we still couldn't get the job done. Diaz couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. Two one on ones missed. Three guilt edge chances in that game. How many more games do I need to mention where we should have put teams to bed? Teams that we're actually competing with directly in the Premier League. You think I'm going to speak about how we got robbed at White Hart Lane? Don't give a dash. We've had more than enough opportunities to put it right. You can talk about if, buts and maybes, but these, these are the most important moments in the Premier League. The Premier League has not been of a high, a mad high standard this season. Moments will win you this Premier League. That's why I said Liverpool are good enough to win the Premier League. Liverpool were more than good enough. We were favourites to win the Europa League. We were favourites. We won the Carabao Cup, so whatever. And arguably, we're probably favourites to win, um, probably one of the favourites to win the FA Cup as well before the Man United draw. We, we were supposed to beat Man United and probably, and we would have had Coventry. We would have faced Coventry. So we would have had the free run to the final. So, so for me to sit here and say Liverpool can win the quad, I'm sorry, I don't think that's a crime. More than capable of winning the Prem, because City aren't the same, and Arsenal will think they're better than they are. More than capable of winning the Europa League, for obvious reasons. And same with the FA Cup, where you already won the, the Europa League. So that's not me being... That's not me being a, a, a Kool-Aid drinker. That's me Did you say it hap it's happening, or did you believe it could happen? No, it, it, it's happening, bro. I'm saying shit. For me, it could... And yeah, saying, that's why they're getting on you for that, because you're yeah, saying it's happening. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying it's happening because I, I can look around my surroundings and go, you're not that good. You're not that good. We're not. But we're that's, why you can't, that's why you can't state it as a fact. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, me, me saying it's happening is just me being, that's me, that, that's the fan in me saying, yo, like, mm. I'm going to stick my neck out there because these lot are showing me that we can actually get results with injuries. With injuries, you know what I'm saying? Because... I don't, we've had, we've had probably the worst injury run at the start of that 2024 to about March period. And we got through it. So to me, I saw enough. However, I also looked to my left and right. I go, hmm, City aren't that good defensively at the moment. And I look at Arsenal, even though they're, they're performing really well, we're actually ahead of them. So we're still in our hands, you know? So, but your manager's yeah. still making a lot of mistakes. That's the only thing I would, I would disagree. No, exactly. with, right? and you're saying that you can do that. Your manager is doing a lot of favouritism. Slubber slice starting a lot of games you shouldn't. Yeah, there's certain yeah. players as well that are getting away with it, like Gakpo. A certain there's a pressure on Salah mm -hmm. to keep producing, and the rest of them don't. How many chances has Diaz missed this season, bro? This Gets is himself into good positions and doesn't score. But you know what I'm saying? saying? Robertson's getting like all these free passes when he ain't performing well, when he ain't crossing the ball well. But then Connor Bradley comes in, which is a young player, gifted player, but young. You know there's going to be ups and downs in this performance. And people, and I see a lot of Liverpool fans gunning for him, but not keeping the same energy with Robertson that's an experienced player that's been there, done that, and knows exactly how to play the system to a tee and should be in his prime. Do you know what I'm saying? I think those kind of things, yeah, is why I was looking at it and I'm thinking, bro, this is, did you not see that as a Liverpool fan thinking, bro, this is why we're not going to win it. Look at the way that Man United cooked you lot as well. Complacency again from your team and your manager, bro. 
favoritism team selection and favoritism the arrogance of your team thinking that it was done when you face man united and then all of a sudden what happened bro do you know what i'm saying your team your manager has been a bit arrogant this season not addressing the fact that darwin nunes isn't clinical enough people got gassed because he scored um a rebound goal against the sheffield united but he was pants he was pants. Why is your manager playing against Atlanta, playing Gakpo through the middle? Play Salah there. Salah's in the stage of his career, a bit like Ronaldo. You ain't got the legs to constantly bombing up and down. Your striker, your main striker ain't performing. Play Salah through the middle and put flipping um, Jota and Diaz playing as wingers, bro. Because Jota's the only other player other than Salah that's been clinical for you guys. So play Salah through the middle and say, bro, you do the Ronaldo role. Don't run up and down, stay in the box because Salah's still very effective in the box. You give him the ball in the box and he doesn't have to be taken on 3-4 man. Bro, he's going to back. He's still going to score. That's down to your manager's management of your team. There's constant things that haven't been that impressive in your team, bro. And your manager hasn't addressed it and continues doing the same crap. Would you, I don't know, would you disagree? That's how no, I see I, it. No, I, I agree. I think there's been, there's been mistakes from Jurgen Klopp. And as I said, the constant, the constant... Um, the constant attention that certain players are getting for me, like what Harvey Elliott has to do to get a 90 minutes is beyond me when everyone's fit. He's the one who's been making the difference. Sober's like somehow knows where the camera is, but doesn't know where the goal is. Absolute scrub at this moment in time. Hella hair flicks and winks and bite into the lip, but not enough bite into the bite into the bullet, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? It's time for him to wake up and smell the coffee, but he's probably waking up and smelling the fragrance because he's a Hollister fucking model or a Nivea men's socialist and specialist because right now he don't play football. You know what I'm saying? It's how can I look good doing this? How can I look good doing that? It's as simple as that, bro. And then obviously we've got the tropical Timo Werner who plays up top. You know what I'm saying? The tropical Timo Werner that fans will somehow live and die by and I don't understand it. Have some shame. Have some decorum. And I listen, I get it. People will look at me and go, I'm a Mo Salah specialist or I'm a Salah sexual, whatever you want to call it. I think that people expect perfection too often from world-class players. I understand they're supposed to stand up. And I understand for me, Salah has not been playing well since he's come back from his hamstring injury. He's not been good enough. And I can sit here and say that. But at the same time, in order, we, we, when we talk about big games and when we talk about how Salah hasn't stepped up, that is categorically false. Every big chance that we've seen created or missed has come from Mo Salah. Who made the pass to Trent for, for Trent to hit the crossbar against Arsenal Football Club? Mo Salah. Who passed it to Diaz when he tried to sweat it instead of shoot against Man United? Mo Salah. <laughs> who gave the ball to Trent when he scored an equaliser against the Etihad? Mo Salah. Who's the one who outside of the foot Trebella passed to Luis Diaz to put him in on goal? Mo Salah. Do you want me to carry on? Because I can carry on if I need to. But people don't want me to carry on because you're going to call me a Salah sexual and you don't see football for the sport that it is. Now I can do this. I can do this. This is why people are like, this, this is why I do this. I really do this, this football thing. And people seem to, they, they watch football like this or they watch or they watch YouTube like this. You see what I'm saying? And they take their ears off when they hear half the conversation. You know what I'm saying? And maybe because people like Northside speak with Vim, they want to hear half of what he says like this. They want to hear half of what he says. And, you know, maybe Northside should go upstairs and put a suit on and and and, and, and dot his eyes and, and cross his T's to be able to really understand the realism when someone speaks about their club in honesty rather than just waking up and calling it hate because they can't wake up and smell the coffee. So as I said, certain players are getting away with murder. I think Klopp has made some serious mistakes in his favouritism, but at the end of the day, we've done enough to win this league, but we bottled it by not finishing off our chances. Liverpool will always concede chances because we played the way we play and the tactics that we employ. But we have specialists to deal with one-on-one -on -one situations. We have specialists. And that's what we do. Virgil van Dijk, specialist in one-on-ones. Alison Becker, specialist in one-on-ones. Even Kelleher has been a specialist in a lot of the one-on-ones he's had this season. Go look at the Carabao Cup final if you don't believe me. Or look at his running and his stint for Liverpool when we, when we, when we won 12. We won 12 in 14. These are one-on-one -on -one specialists. Kanate, one-on-one -on -one specialist. Not the best set. Not the best centre-back, uh, second-best centre-back at our club, John Matip is, but he's still a one-on-one -on -one specialist. Yeah? That is, that is the philosophy of Liverpool Football Club. Turnovers and goals. But when it comes to sustaining possession and control of the ball, we struggle. We do struggle. There's a lack of technical ability in this team and an, and an overflux of emotion. There's no you know? clinicalness. Your whole football is structured on, yeah. we'll concede chances, but we'll outscore you. You, got, yeah. you can get away with it when you go we're up against United. We're you can get away with it when you go up against Sheffield yeah. United. But eventually, somebody's going to take those chances and put you to bed. Do you know what I'm saying? And when they do put you to bed, that's the problem. Your over-reliance on Salah's been poor. Your, your recruitment's been poor. 
Your whole system is based on goals. And when players are not bagging in goals, your fan base justifying Darwin Nunes and Diaz is unacceptable because you concede a lot. Against Sheffield United in the first, what, 15, 20 minutes, you should have been 2-0 down. Just they didn't have the quality to, to put you to bed. Brighton absolutely cooked you in that first half, bro. But because they don't have the quality, you got away with it. But you didn't get away with it against Man United. You didn't get away with it in other games after that, bro. So this is the problem. Lewis, I want to bring you in a conversation, bro. What do you make of Liverpool this season? Um, They've they've had enough volume that they've been able to get through with a lot of the games this season. I get why um, they've looked as one of the favourites throughout the season. But I don't know. I guess with Salah, it's kind of dried up recently. I guess that's probably been the difference maker because the over-reliance on Diaz, Nunes, it's, it's been what's cost them a lot. And defense has fallen apart a, a little bit. I only say a little bit, not too much. But I also think that's because now they're having a bit too much to deal with. Like, I guess going up against Man City, you always need near perfection, which is why, like, they they run you down throughout the not, season. Not this season, though, Lewis. Though. I don't think people need to be perfect this year. I don't think Arsenal will no, near have... perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not like previous. I think previous years was perfection. Like, you know, the years that we lost by a point, I think that was when you needed to be perfect. But we lost one game in the league mm. and come second with 92 points. <laughs> that's that's what you need. But this year, City, City were... Do you know what I'm like, saying? Like, it's mad because we all say it's done, but like one City lost changes everything. Oh, 100%. And, and to be fair, they, they play a little bit later than us. But so, Lewis, just to even cut, cut you, bro, I just think that the way City have played this season, they haven't even needed to do the mad team to trump Liverpool and Arsenal. That's how much it was in Liverpool and Arsenal's hands this year. Mm -hmm. A lot of City fans not had given up, but were kind of just coasting game by game. Coasting game by game. And on paper, they'll say that they've done what they needed to do. But City have not looked good. They have conceded their defence is just as shaky as Liverpool's. It's just as... And it's, it's, far, it's far away from Arsenal's. You know what I'm saying? But again, whether you want to call it burnout, whether you want to call it tactical issues, getting over the line... I don't know what you. I don't. Know, I don't know what you want to put it down to, but it's just not good enough. It's not good enough. I think it's if it's, it's overall comes down to your front line. I think. Yep. Too and many big chances, Mister. Too many, and Salah. And listen, and I'm not even trying to overprotect Salah. What I'm trying to say is that world class players do not perform for a hundred percent of the season. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Floyd Eden Hazard. Did Hazard perform one hundred percent? Thirty eight games in the season. He didn't, bro. He ha he had off games. I wouldn't say yeah, off like, periods. I mean, off games, though, bro. You can have two, three, four off games. If Salah's had two, Salah's only been back, Salah started five times since he's been back from injury, bro. I think it's even you four. We're talking Premier League football only, or even three. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and it's all like my. But my thing is, when you have five attackers and we claim that our attack is so interchangeable, that is so good, it's so flexible, then why is it that? You know, three of the five can't hit a barn door under half the amount of pressure. And the one guy with the 25% accuracy in front of goal, the one guy who we call Mr. Clinical, is barely on the pitch. The one guy who we call Mr. Clinical barely complete. He hasn't completed the whole season for Liverpool since he's got it. And he's been here since 2021. He signed when Thiago signed and he hasn't completed a full season. So if you can't rely on the guy who's actually clinical and when Salah actually decides to have an off period, who the hell steps up? So why is people's answer immediately sell Salah when he was the best player for half the season? When you can get 60 million for Diaz and you can cash out for Darwin Nunes for 50, that's 110 million. There you go. You get And you get your other player to stay there for, for the next year if you need to and if he doesn't want to leave. It's not that hard. Do you want to get rid of... Yeah. I think Hussam put the chart, yeah, to back your argument. Hussam showed me the chart, yeah. Salah's missed... But Salah's scored 15 goals and he's missed 15. I think Darwin Nunes scored something like seven or eight, something around there, and he's, he's missed got 32. Like 20 odd chances or something. Something crazy. And, he, and back who have those him. chances come from? Who have those chances come from? Probably Salah. Former Callister. Yeah. Trent has been there. It's not even been Trent. You know? It's crazy, uh, man. It's crazy. We'll, we'll get you out of your misery. Lewis, your team right now is in decent form. You're going up against Man City. Two wins and two wins out of the last three. You got a draw against Sheffield United. Smashed Everton. Cole Palmer. There was a little bit of a let's, let's get into it first before we get into Chelsea Man City. The penalty. The penalty situation. 
What's your thoughts? So what happens when you don't have a designated penalty taker? Everyone starts arguing about it. It's happened like four times this season with us. Now it's been solved. Apparently they finally just said Cole Palmer's the penalty taker. We're going to leave it there. And better late than never. But that's the real issue with it. Like, Madwake, he wants to take the penalty because he's got a good goal uh, penalty record and he wants to get his goal bonus. Jackson's there for God knows what reason. Palmer's the penalty taker. Palmer's the one going for the golden boot right now. The fact he's even in that conversation is insane. But with that in mind, like, what are we, what are we arguing about? Give it to Palmer and just leave it there because he's our best penalty taker. We need to up the goal difference. And, yeah, so why are we arguing about this for so long? It was annoying at that period because I'm thinking, if we can do this now, imagine if we're actually drawing against Man City and then someone's moaning about, oh, I want to take this pen. I want to take this pen. We already had Madwaki doing that with Palmer when we were 3-2 down against United in the 99th minute. So hopefully that's done now. But I'll wait till I see. I'll wait till I see us in another situation before I, I really believe that. Have you been liking anything? You know, obviously you smashed no, Everton. No. Been, is, no, is, is your manager showing you anything? Are yeah, you, yeah, that that's not the reason why we won 6-0. It weren't no Enzo. What it was was there was no Gallagher in the 10. That's what the prob that's what the solution was. Now I have someone who's actually creating in the middle. Because Enzo weren't playing. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason why we dropped Gallagher deeper. But what I'm saying is you could have Gallagher in that deep position or Enzo in that deep position, pause, and we would have been we would have been fine. <laughs> The thing is, the the solution was that we have Palmer staying in the 10 position. So we have someone to receive the ball there and connect from midfield to attack and someone who's just 10, a thousand times more creative. So yeah, like great performance against Everton. I say all of this, we'll prob we probably will be better with Gallagher in the 10 for Man City just because he's that good in terms of his performance. But if Enzo ain't fit enough to start, just throw Gallagher uh, back in the pivot. We'll see if he can do it in that from a deeper position in that game too. But I don't have a lot of confidence for that game either because it's Man City. I don't care if they played two days ago. Like We haven't beaten them yet. We've played well against them, but that's it. You have to go and prove something on Saturday. And if you can do that, cool. I believe we can go for the FA Cup. For now, we're just there to play. And whatever happens, happens. Would you go with the same lineup? Um... If Enzo isn't fit, yes. What about if not, when you played City at the bridge, though, for me, I think you performed really well. I know it was a while back now, and you know, the situation <clears throat> was different, but I think you were really good. Yeah, we were really good in both games. Did so, you go back then? Um, that one had Sterling on the left, which I mean, we probably will do anyway. Who's on the right? Palmer's on the right. Gallagher in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have any problems with that. That would be Thiago Silva and I think the Sassy at the back, though. I don't know if the Sassy's ready for this game. If it's not him, it'll probably be Chalaber again. But chalaber has been pretty decent the last few games. Would you would you think of Mudrick? Because this Chelsea fan saying take Mudrick out, never gonna make, never gonna rate him. Well, I think he's got a lot better in terms of his playmaking this season. It's just only just starting to get into um, a bit more game time. So, like, the jury's still out with him. There's not really a lot I can say in terms of his performance to be like, yeah, he's gassing me up. I really think we've got something with him. But, like, I see improvements in his game. I see where he can perform at his best. He's at his best in the 10, in my opinion. Let him focus on his passing. He's not really that sort of guy you want running in behind in spite of his speed. So, I don't think he's been too bad this season. It's just, again, for where we are. Score prediction against Man City? Now, my heart, my heart is saying 2-1. My head is saying we're losing 2-0. But well, let's just hope City are tired. Let's hope that actually counts for something. I hear that. I hear that. Who have you got, months? You playing on the weekend? Oh, Fulham. Fulham. Match prediction. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. Guys, Cloppy's last year, man. Do it for Cloppe. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, why are you so down, man? Look at this. What? 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 Why I've is been there, blue? man. Why is, why, is the, why is the sky blue? Oh, it's not. It's not. <laughs> why is the sky blue? Oh, it's yeah, it ain't blue right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's kind of grey, I can't lie. It's, I'll be real. No, remember, no open play goals. 
No open play goals in a in three and a half games, I believe. I in this vein of form, I don't see Liverpool beating anyone. I can't see where the next win comes from. I'm Even just ready for it. it will, is it that will, really an on their day sort of team? They're not really anything that special. And it will be your masterclass and a Raul Jimenez dagger. It's on its, oh, sorry, Muniz, sorry, a, a Muniz dagger on the way in it. Pause. I hear it. Nice you know what? I feel the same way about my club. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like these fucking we can all unite care. on that. These pricks don't <laughs> fucking care about me, bro. These fucking pricks don't care about me. They don't give a fuck. They yeah. don't give a. They don't give a fuck, bro. Just fucking Some of them, not all of them. Some of them, they don't. They just don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Man, look, I don't think you man understand what I had to watch yesterday. I could have done so many other things than watch that dross, watch that shit. To add to oh yeah, I was locked into that too. We we were one nil up. Man were playing like we were one nil up on aggregate rather than three one down on aggregate. That's how man were playing. Man were playing like we were trying to play for like we you know we've got our goal. We got our away goal. Man were, man were playing like it was still away goals <laughs> on a times three. That's that's how man was still playing. Like the away goal away goal who was enhanced and times by three. That's how these man were playing. Scrubs. Nah, I hear that. I hear that. I was I was paying more attention to the Benfica game, but I had your game on, and I thought, okay, they scored early. That's what you want to see from your team when you're three 0 down. You scored early, mm-hmm. you got the pen. But the one thing I said, yeah, Salah can drop a stinker now. He scored the penalty. He can drop a stinker. They're not going to mention Salah's poor performances because as much as I like Salah, some of his performances stink. He'll score a goal, but man be ghosting the rest of the game or not not really effective. Not 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 effective in the game. Do you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. I thought, listen, if you guys go in at half time, 2 0 up, you got a game. All of a sudden, Atlanta open up. You already know the occasion, everything else like that. That's what happened to Benfica. Benfica played Marseille, and we were just defending, bro. We had the 1 0 lead, and we just defended, 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 defended. And then the dagger came. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, the dagger came, bro. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a joke. Well, it came in the penalties, but you can't, you can't go into Europe. With a one nil lead and think that you're going to defend that in the second leg, it just doesn't work like that. But yeah, man. So it's one of them ones, man. That's why I'm not cooking you too hard because yeah, both of my clubs are in the mud, man. Both, you know what I mean? Two like Twix, you know what I mean? You get two, so double L's for me this season, man. You know what I mean? L's in Portugal, L's in London. Yeah, yeah even Benfica is- lost, didn't they? Hmm. Even Benfica lost, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, oh, bros. Is penalties, yeah. penalties, isn't it? Penalties. Yeah. Penalties. That's the most heartbreaking way to go Team out. Team Maria missing the penalty is crazy of all players. And he's him all season and he's 36. Yeah, but he's still like, he's still, he was balling. I thought he had a good game. It was a wrap. Now this game, this game to me, it was his worst game. But other games, he's been, he's been hard. But listen, man, yeah, I, I only caught the end, didn't it? I only caught the end when you lost started to finally play like he wanted to win. Yeah, 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 but well, I don't want to get into Benfica, bro. I, I don't want to get into it, bro. I swear down. I just hey, listen, you're lucky I got to go because I would have said, Let's get into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I bet you would. I bet you would. Look at this guy. <laughs> I bet you would. Yeah, please, bro. Because this is it. We've got Jordan Nunes back. Jordan Nunes back. No, 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 no. Make sure, yeah, you send those monthly payments expeditiously. Yeah, make sure those payments are on time. Oh, yeah, yeah you're still paying for him. Yeah. It's over you know, the contract. Isn't it? How about this? When when we sold him, you were well, you were you were actually happy when we sold when you when we got him off you, innit? Did yeah, you I was him? like, what are these guys doing, bro? Like, Did you rate him? Him? When he was your player, nah, one one good season, bro. I was like, no, nah, he ain't ready, bro. Mm-hmm. He ain't ready. To be fair, like, but but to be fair, did you think Ramos though? Did you think Ramos already? Same thing. Nah, 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 nah. He was even less prepared than him because he was just finishing the first good season and he was sold. And I was like, it's too early. It was too early. And it's the same mistake that Jao Felix did and it's the same mistake that um, Renato Sanchez did. They left too early. Ruben Diaz was in the team for years before he left Benfica. And I think when you're in the sixth, you know, I'd say the Portuguese league is the sixth strongest league in the world. That's a major jump going from the sixth strongest league to the first strongest league. Of course, there's players like Ruben Diaz that's done well and, and, and Bernardo Silva, but there's still a lot of players that left. Look at, look at Bruno Fernandes, left the Portuguese league, didn't do it. Look at Jackson Martinez. Yep. Look at Falcao. 
Yeah, Falcao went over to the Spanish League. I think Portuguese players transitioned better from the Portuguese League to the Spanish League because it's all technical. Yes, La Liga is on a, on a better level, but the style of football is able to adjust. With the Premier League, there are, one's the pace of the football and it's not so much about technicality here. It's pace power all the time. And I think that jump, I think sometimes comes too soon if they don't have enough time at Benfica. And that's why I think that, that move was too early, bro. But no worries, though, yeah, because we, we need a rebuild. So make sure, yeah, those payments are coming on time, bro, because we need anyway, to Anyway, listen, I've got, a, I've got a stream. I'm starting <laughs> this stream. I'm about to get cooked by the man them on Big Six Banks for getting knocked out of Europe. So. Oh, no, um, again. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and you know who it is, isn't it? It's just going to be a long day, in it? So, yeah. Um, Enjoy yeah. months, man. Enjoy. Thanks for having me. And uh, we're all in the mud together, guys. Take yep. care. Hopefully, uh, maybe after this weekend, we'll have something more positive to talk about. Hashtag Kool Aid. Anyway, <laughs> love, bro. Take care. Big up. Big up. Love, love, love. Listen, familia, make sure you're liking and subscribing to all the boys. Staffy's link to his channel is in the description. Lewis's link to his channel is in the description. And so is Staffy. Don't be a fool of that puta. Don't make me have to use this wooden spoon, yeah? Don't make me have to use this. Make sure you're liking we'll and the real words. Do you know what I'm saying? That's how you know it's a proper wooden spoon. Look how dusty it is at the end. You know what I'm saying? Proper food. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no Uber's Uber Eats. You know what I'm saying? This is proper food. African food being cooked on this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Real. Real. You know what I'm saying? Actually, talking about African food, just before we wrap up here, yeah? talking about African food, me and my girl, actually, she went to a Ethiopian, is it Ethiopian? I think it's Ethiopian restaurant. Mm. And she, she was having the food there, and I was like, yo, you didn't invite me. So I'm soon going to, to your culture's food, bro, and trying out the food there still. Bro. I had a nice little palate last week, man. The whole buffet, it was unbelievable. But I've only just started game. Man? Which one? Because there's loads in North London. Um, oh, I, I only go around Bush because it's near it's near where I live. Mm -hmm. Shepherd's Bush got like 20 of them. I got Shepherd's Bush then, man. You need to tell me. The only thing, because we got we got a friend, and she's Ethiopian, yeah. And um she I was like, yo, the raw raw meat. I was like, I can't, I don't know if I can. I've never ate raw meat. I've tried a little bit of it, a little bit. It's it not like? too bad. It's not bad, but like I can't fuck with the texture. It's not Is for it? me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I'll go for the cooked food. I'll be real. It's not for me. Nah, I need different to try palette. Cuisine, different man. palette. And you lot got the bread as well with all the meat and all that. I'm like, I need to, I need to try that, bro. I need to try. Yeah, I got the injera base. Yeah, beautiful, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing. What you got coming up, bro? Um, I got one more stream with Hamza tonight at around nine thirty. So keep a look for look out for that shameless city right there. And yeah, that'll be me done. Yeah, yeah, Hamza's the best troll. I thought I was shameless, and then I met Hamza. Now nah, you're the real king, shameless. I'm just a prince compared to you. That's different, <laughs> bro. He was telling, but how was he telling? How was he telling his Sam? He goes, "You'll never walk alone." <laughs> 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 that's the best one where he's like disgrace can't tell if he's actually spitting or not <laughs> but listen man listen your boy called Palmer quickly before we wrap up we're going to wrap up in, in the next minute your mm. boy called Palmer that guy I must say it that guy has the ability to be world class you know why not because of the hype you look at his composure you look at the way he takes goals you look at his technical ability yeah, the way he reads the game. He let nothing phase him. Nothing. Bro, that guy has the ability to become world class. I'm telling you. You need a certain cool. mentality for that. And you can tell he has that in spades. Bro, even when it's pens away, it just doesn't look phased, bro. Even a celebration, bro, everything, bro. Like the way he gets himself into good positions and he takes his opportunities. Yeah, his technical ability, the way he leaves players, because he's not like mad fast. He's not crazy fast, yeah, but... Yeah, it's like he, made, he lets you think you can get him. And then just when you think that, bang, <clears> he's not made you. That you're through. How much did you get him for? 45 million. It was the such a random before. transfer at the time. We were never linked to him. I was like, wait, what? Got that brother who scored in the community shield. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, welcome. Welcome to the club. I, was, I wasn't against it. I just didn't see a lot of him. So I was like, whatever. We seem to have done all right with our transfers so far, so I ain't going to be against this one. And wow, 
since the first game, I thought, how the hell did City let him go? Especially when you're bringing in Jeremy Doku. Like, what the hell? It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, that's it's insane. That's insane, but I guess it's pure profit. So, whatever. <clears throat> You'll find some sort of copium from it. But it weren't the right move. Not at all. Mm. What are you saying, man? This game on the weekend will make or break your season, yeah? Or you just don't... It's whatever. Oh, no. This, this is... The next few games are season defining. We've got City, then you guys, then Villa, then Spurs, then West Ham. And we can't afford to lose any of them. I don't think we win all of them, but apparently we play better against a better team. So I guess we'll find out because it's sink or swim time. I'm at a point where like, I doubt I'm going to get annoyed with results, but I mean, we'll still see. Because I know if we lose tomorrow, I'm going to be fuming all over again like the last game. But we are unbeaten in our last eight. So we'll see if we can keep that going. Mm. No, I hear that, man. Do you think you guys can beat Arsenal? Because I think you can, bro. Like, the confidence is in an all-time low. I think you can actually beat I just want to take whatever I can from that fixture and keep it stepping. I'll be so real. <laughs> I'll be so real. Like, I've, like, I don't have a lot of confidence for that game or for any real game coming up. I've seen us draw to the bottom, too. Whatever happens, happens. And just please try and take something from the Emirates. That's what I'm begging. I beg we take something, but I don't believe we will. Unless you guys are just gassed off the last two games. So end this game in 90. And we'll work from there. I hear it, man. I hear it. Listen, make sure people you're liking and subscribing. More importantly, make sure you're liking and subscribing to Carefree Lewis. The link to his channel is in the description. Make sure you make sure you go check. Yeah, put the notification bell so you go check Lewis and Hamza. Because that's going to be hilarious. I'm definitely going to be watching that because I'm going to be chilling now, just dropping videos. Make sure you go watch and, and subscribe to Carefree Lewis. Make sure you go doing all that stuff. This guy's hilarious. Ever since I met him at Never a Foul Barbecue, this guy's crazy. Like The way this guy was tolerating my You need to reload that again, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin chatting rubbish to you, yeah? You're just like, bro, just relax. Like... <laughs> Havertz and Burkamp and all that crap. <laughs> but yeah, listen, people, make sure you do all of that. We're going to redirect now to Staffy. Make sure you like and subscribe. And without further ado, we're out. Love. Love.